Between the ocean and the Garonne River, at the foot of the Pyrenees, lies a treasure, a secret land of contrasting accents. In the heart of Gascony, when the fog clears, warm and wild colours dance on the hills, wind their way through the vines and across the forests. Hot in the summer, the sun cools in the fall, then retires behind a curtain of November rains. Cold, white mornings usher in winter. Time flows by tranquilly here. In this land, sheltered for thousands of years, in intimate contact with Gascony's history, the meeting of East and West gave birth to the oldest of French brandies, Armagnac. This spirit, they say, when taken medically and soberly, has 40 virtues, wrote Master Vital Dufour, prior of Eos, in his medical treatise from 1310, found in the Vatican. At the beginning were the therapeutic virtues. It sharpens the mind when taken in moderation, brings the past to memory, makes man joyous above all, preserves youth, and delays senility. This water that burns, egg ardenti, was by the 15th century a common product at the Sensive market. But it was in the 17th century that its production intensified and its quality developed. The English, who were masters of Bordeaux, prohibited any wines but their own from passing on the Garonne River. The Dutch thus became interested in this brandy that was not included in the embargo. An Armagnac market was quickly established in Mont de Marsan and Air sur la Doue. To reduce fluctuations in production from one year to the next, they stopped brandy in oak barrels. Thus arose the alchemy of brandy and wood. The aromas were awakened, the roundness was intensified, and amber became the color. Armagnac is a product of craftsmen, Fruit of the land, it is crafted with passion, in small quantities, by vintners who carry on ancestral traditions. From generation to generation, the men of this land created a prestigious product. In their image, unshakable on the turf of a rugby field, audacious, legs bound, feet together in berries to jump over the bull at the course Landes convivial on a market evening to the sound of a dance band. At the beginning of winter, when they burn the Armagnac flame, or after the ferriers, the bullfights and the bull races of the land, when the arenas and streets are invaded with the rhythms of popular brass bands, the local pleasures are savoured. The Dajos family story began around a table in the heart of the land Bas Armagnac in Villeneuve de Marsan. In 1928, Francis Darroze's father took over the family's small cafe hotel and transformed it into a two-star restaurant. It was then that he was nicknamed King John. At 15, Francis began following his father to regional producers, searching for quality products. From foie gras and grain-fed poultry, mushrooms and game, river fish, seasonal fruit and fresh vegetables, to bottles of Armagnac, the local nest egg. If the region of Agen has its prunes, the land its pines, and the bigot its corn, Armagnac has its vines once said Joseph de Pesquidou. For even after the Phylloxera plague eradicated 100,000 hectares of vines at the beginning of the century, forcing the Gascon farmer to develop parallel agricultural activities like stock farming or cereals, he always kept a few vines and some barrels for brighter days. Today, the Armagnac brandy production zone 
defined on the 25th of May 1909 by the Fallier Decree, covers vineyards planted in three departments, mainly the Gers, with a piece of the land to the west and some of lot -e to the north. Torn by streams flowing into the Adour and the Garonne rivers, this territory is divided into three distinct appellations. The Haut Armagnac, called White Armagnac for its chalky limestone banks, is a land of short and abrupt hillsides, where today vines are becoming scarce. Tinares Armagnac is found around Condom. There, the first woods appear. The vines spread over a chalky, clay soil and the relief is gentler. But it is in the Baz Armagnac that the Armagnac vines are really centered, those that produce the finest, most complex and unpredictable brandies. Everything is favorable, from the earth to the sky. The temperate oceanic climate offers warm yet rigorous winters, rainy springs, hot dry summers and sunny falls, which are ideal for ripening grapes. A veritable natural barrier, the land forest, very close to the vineyards, is a formidable regulator of temperature and precipitation. The land is particularly undulating. Cereals are grown at the foot of the hillsides, while vines are at mid-slope. On the tops of the hills are the forests of oak, that rich wood so intimately bound to Armagnac. The ocean, which covered these lands three times during the tertiary period, left a marine, now alluvial sand, called tawny or bright sand, that is sometimes acidic, rich, light and easy to work, and that brings this region its noble uniqueness. It was to this 15 by 25 kilometer territory that he knew so well from having traveled over it so often that Francis Darroz decided to consecrate himself dedicating himself exclusively to Armagnac. Rich from his experience, he pursued his searches and chose brandies from individual producers for whom he then took responsibility for the aging and marketing. His goal, from the beginning, was to respect the originality of each estate, to preserve the unique character that the soil, climate and grape variety brought to each of his brandies. He was the first wine merchant to place the accent on the terroir or soil, estate and vintage. Building on his friendships in the world of fine dining that appreciated the rigorous and specific quality of each of his brandies, Francis Darroz quickly became a renowned ambassador for Armagnac. No fewer than 10 grape varieties are authorized in the making of this brandy. They are listed in the June 6, 1936 decree that defined the regulations for the Appellation d'Origine Controlée. If you set aside Clairette de Gascogne, Plante de Grèce, Jura Saint Blanc, Mousac, and Meslier Saint Francois, the traditional varieties with their rare and evocative names, as well as Colombard that is now used more for local table wines, three essential varieties are left. Baco 22A is a typical variety from Armagnac. This hybrid, which was born from a land schoolmaster's passion after the destruction of vines by Phylloxera in 1893, thrives mainly on the tawny sands of the land Baz Armagnac. Because it is found only here, because it needs more aging, and because in aging its aromatic complexity develops a roundness and a suaveness, Baco produces a typical and distinguished brandy that is sought after by the Darroz house. The Fall Blanche, once known as the Pique Pool, is the historic variety of Armagnac. It was a victim of phylloxera and was totally destroyed and today is grafted onto a vine stock that resists the parasite. Its cultivation remains difficult. It is a variety that is sensitive to grey and black rot and needs frequent and costly treatment, 
but produces a remarkable brandy. In the first years of aging, it brings an unequaled floral freshness of delicate elegance. Uni Blanc, or the Charente Saint-Emilion, is the distillation variety par excellence. Frequently used for blending, its acidic wines produce fine, quality brandies. Armagnac is a product of craftsmen. Its production, unchanged over time, includes three stages of equal importance. Vinification, distillation and aging. The grape harvest takes place at the end of September and early October. Its timing is decided according to the ripeness of the grapes and the year's meteorological conditions. The best wines for distillation are acidic and low in alcohol, 9%, 18 degrees proof. Vinification has remained traditional. Adding sulfites against oxidation, sulfiting and sugar to raise the degree of alcohol, chaptalization are forbidden. The wine's low degree of alcohol renders it fragile and requires impeccable hygiene for the vats and equipment. Sheltered from the air, the wine's natural acidity protects it from bacterial attack and gives it an optimal capability to conserve its freshness and aromas until distillation can begin 15 days to three weeks later. It is during the distillation, when the wine is distilled to separate the water and alcohol and preserve the aromas, that Armagnac is born. To do this, very few use a double distilling still like those used in cognac. Most vintners opt for the Armagnac Alambique, or still, a hammered or rolled copper apparatus constructed under the direction of the Marquis de Bona in 1797 and consecrated 20 years later with a patent under Louis XVIII. It is distinguished by its continuous functioning, which allows it to obtain in one spout a colorless spirit with a high degree of alcohol between 52 and 68 percent. Inside, there is a veritable game of seduction between the wine and the brandy. They follow opposite paths. The wine climbs and heats in the boiler, intersected by a serpentine coil, where the brandy vapors condense. In the bubble plates, the vapors climb and bubble in the descending wine. The vapors grow rich with the passage of alcohol and aromas. Distillation demands particular attention. The right temperature is essential and the distiller's experience is indispensable. When it comes out of the still, the Armagnac is ardent and spirited, already rich in aromas. Pear and grape compete with vine flowers or lime blossoms. All that is missing is the combination of wood and a maître de chaise or cellar master's years of experience to develop its full complexity. Right away, the spirits are placed in 400-liter rooms giant barrels of white oak from the Gascony forests. Resistant and waterproof, this wood is rich in tannins and permeable to the cellar's atmosphere. A 100-year-old tree with a two-meter circumference is sawed into bulk, manually split into quarters, then into stave wood that is left to dry in the open air for at least three years. Staves are then made from this wood larger in the middle than at the extremities, which a cooper assembles into a barrel. Placed inside the ring of iron mold, the staves are made supple by use of a small heater, fed with oak chips. The fire's heat allows the cooper to press the free end of the barrel until its final form is achieved. Without it, the staves would break. Then, the wood is slightly burned which brings a finesse and character 
to the Armagnac's aromas. Thus begins the Armagnac's crafting. It's aging. To achieve a subtle balance between three distinct elements, tannin, alcohol and aromas. The Maître de Chez watches over the evolution of the young brandy's tannins, firstly in new rooms from 18 to 24 months, during which the brandy attacks the wood that yields its colour and its bitter and astringent tannin. Then in older barrels, where the Armagnac's woody substances soften and become fine, turning from amber to mahogany. During this time, the wood breathes. The spirits evaporate and the degree of alcohol diminishes. Naturally, over long years, without reducing. That's why at Daros they distill at 53 degrees, because they take the time to wait. At least 12 to 15 years. And because in distilling the wine less, they preserve more of its soul and its style. Slowly, in contact with the wood, the tannins oxidize and lose their aggressiveness. Fruit aromas like prune and quince take on spicier notes like cinnamon and vanilla and also clove. When this perfect harmony between tannin, alcohol and aromas is reached, rarely before 12 years, varyingly depending on the estate or the year, the Armagnac is ready for tasting. Once bottled, it no longer ages. While in the barrel, it continues to mature. After 30 years, the extraction of tannins is exhausted. The alcohol content diminishes and the aromas at the end of the cycle develop towards rancio, which evokes nuts, dried fruit, almonds and even leather. An intimate relation develops between the Maître de Chez and his brandies. Patient, he moves, tastes, stirs and aerates. Once in the cellar, no Armagnac is treated in the same way. Aging is an art. Patience is the key word. Daros Armagnacs are aged at two different sites. The young spirits in the cellars of La Bastide d'Armagnac, the oldest in the cellars of Roquefort des Landes. On both aging sites, humidity is controlled to control the loss of alcohol, the angel share. Today, Mark, his son, continues the adventure and travels over the vineyards of the region with the same respect and exactitude as his father, choosing the estates and products that will reveal the taste of prunes and violets that are so characteristic of Baz Armagnac brandies. He enriches an exceptional collection where some 30 estates are aged alongside each other. Taken exclusively from the Baz Armagnac Triangle, Chateau de la Brise, Domaine de Cap de Pont, Domaine de Touja, Domaine de Mahu and Domaine de Cavaillon have contributed to the renown of Darroze's Armagnacs. Today there are Domaine Aumartin, Peyron, Joan Chicot, Saint-Aubin, Peyrot, Audure, Auduc, Coquillon, Pouteillou, Guillemouta. In the range called the Unique Collection, the brandies taken from different estates are never blended. Thus, the particular characteristics given to them by the soil, climate and variety are preserved. The name of the estate is indicated on the bottle, in homage to the vintner's work. The vintage is also indicated. Each year is different and brings its own intrinsic quality. 
not one of the 45 vintages in the Shea, from 1900 to the present day, is blended. Finally, since the Armagnacs age in barrels over long years, the reduction in alcohol happens naturally, without adding water. The aromas, marvelously well preserved, evoke hazelnut, orange peel, cocoa, quince, vervain, leather and vanilla. They are a mixture of gentleness and violence. To know the age of an Armagnac, the label also gives the bottling date. For except for the very oldest Armagnacs placed in giant glass containers, the Armagnacs are in barrels and are only bottled progressively in response to orders. During this time, tranquilly, the aging phase continues. This diversity in the cru, the years, the grape varieties and the styles has allowed Marc Daros to work on this range known as Les Grands Assemblages, the Great Blends. Chosen for their complementary characteristics, the selected Armagnacs in each blend are different ages. Each age on the bottle indicates the age of the youngest Armagnac in the blend. The fruity aromas in the younger blends, with flavours of chocolate and coffee for the older Eau de Vie, changing to notes of spices and candied fruits around 30 years old. The aromatic palette evolves naturally over the years. You can discover this evolution in each blend. Many years of ageing in 400 litre oak barrels have given the oiliness and roundness to the tannins, so that each Grand Assemblage reveals its own proper balance between the alcohol, the aromas and the tannins. To taste these natural spirits, you mustn't jump on Armagnac. You have to prepare it. You have to tickle it to reflect upon it. Armagnac cries. And why does it cry? Because along the glass, the alcohol transforms into glycerol, which is a criterion of quality. Once you've sniffed in the glass, you sip delicately, very lightly into your mouth in order to diffuse over the palate. Because at first the alcohol is a little strong, a little aggressive which means that with the second taste it passes much easier. You have to roll it around your mouth, roll the Armagnac and then all the aromas are released. You must be patient, know how to wait for the Armagnac. The notes can seem a little aggressive but they lessen progressively over time. I find the notes in the bouquet very vanilla. As time goes by, there are notes of cinnamon, white chocolate and white cocoa. The important thing when tasting these brandies is the roundness in your mouth. The more Armagnacs age, the more they take on the tannins from the barrels. An Armagnac shouldn't be too amber, because that's when it's taken on too much tannin, and that gives notes that are much too astringent, much less velvety. It's important to see the gold of the Armagnac. The Armagnac must be golden coloured. The ideal age for a brandy is 20-25 years. Then it's in full maturity, full balance. But you must not compare brandies of 10, 15 or 20 years. You can't say that one is better. You have to place each Armagnac in its own year's context. Very old Armagnacs aren't necessarily better quality. Clear, white brandy is magnificent. When it comes out of the still, it's fantastic. That's the interest, the beauty of Armagnac. Each one is different from the others. Each piece is different from the others.